Without SpaceX, China would have outlaunched the U.S. for years. True. That's what Elon Musk just shared on X. Right now, SpaceX is still the top launch provider in the world, thanks to its reliable and cost-effective fleet of rockets. But that lead might not last forever. China is catching up quickly. And it's not just about launching rockets. China is making progress across a wide range of areas in the space industry. So, who's going to come out on top? SpaceX or China? China's space program has just pulled off something huge. On Thursday, the country's trusted Long March rocket family reached its six hundred launch, marking a major leap forward in both capability and ambition. This time, it was the Long March 8A that soared into the sky, successfully delivering a batch of internet satellites into orbit. But this launch wasn't just about the payload. It marked a turning point in how China runs its space missions. For the first time ever, the professional testing and launch team took full control of the range testing and launch procedures. That means the people on the ground, the engineers, technicians, and specialists handled everything, while the original rocket designers simply observed. It's a big step toward a more streamlined, professional, and commercial-friendly launch model that's ready for the fast-paced future of space. According to Guan Zuk from the China Academy of Launch Vehicle Technology, running these missions isn't just about high-tech know-how, it's also about safety and precision. He explained that handling high-pressure gases at up to 36 megapascals is no joke. It takes serious training and coordination to keep things safe. Since its very first flight back in 1970, when the Long March 1 launched China's first satellite, Dongfang Hong 1, the Long March series has now flown 600 times, and the momentum is only growing. This latest mission was already the fourth flight of the Long March 8A just this year. Chief designer Song Zheng Yu pointed out that it's rare for a new rocket to reach such a high flight frequency so soon after its debut. But the 8A has done just that, proof of both the vehicle's reliability and the team's growing confidence and expertise. The Long March series has long been the backbone of China's space program, carrying out over 86% of the country's launches and delivering nearly 1,400 spacecraft into orbit. These rockets have been crucial to major projects like manned space flights, the Beidou navigation system, and deep space exploration. And they're not done yet. Of the 24 Long March variants developed so far, 11 are part of a new generation of more advanced, more capable rockets. In the last 100 missions alone, these newer models have handled 40% of the workload. China's space contractor CASC says it's adapting fast to meet commercial demands. The share of commercial launches is climbing, and payloads now range from communications and remote sensing to full satellite internet constellations. The Long March 8A, in particular, is designed with cost efficiency and flexibility in mind. It's already playing a key role in deploying satellite networks for China's growing space economy. Let's talk specs for a moment. The Long March 8A is an upgraded version of the original Long March 8, which debuted in 2020. It's got a beefed-up hydrogen-oxygen second stage and a wider payload fairing, 5.2 meters across, to carry more farther. It stands 50.5 meters tall, weighs in at 371,000 kilograms at liftoff, and produces about 480 tons of thrust. That's enough to haul up to 7,000 kilograms into a sun-synchronous orbit, a workhorse for satellite constellation missions. While early ideas considered making it reusable, the focus has shifted to keeping it simple and fast. That's why CASC is developing dedicated reusable rockets like the upcoming Long March 9, 10, and 12 instead. Meanwhile, the expendable Long March 8 series is being prepped for high-frequency, modular launches from China's Hainan commercial spaceport, ready to help deploy mega-constellations like Guowang and Chenfan, thousand sails. Looking ahead, the Long March family is evolving toward bigger payloads, faster turnaround, higher reliability, and lower cost. China's aiming for the moon with a Long March 10, and ground tests are already showing major progress. There's also a massive heavy lift rocket in the pipeline to take China's space access even further. While China was busy celebrating its 600th Long March launch, SpaceX quietly hit an incredible milestone of its own. In the early hours of Thursday, a Falcon 9 rocket lifted off from Cape Canaveral at 5.27 a.m. Eastern, carrying 28 more Starlink satellites into orbit. But the real story came just minutes later. After completing its mission, the first-stage booster made a flawless landing 
landing on the drone ship, just read the instructions in the Atlantic Ocean. It was the 500th successful landing of a Falcon rocket booster, a moment that speaks volumes about how far reusable rocketry has come. Elon Musk marked the occasion with a brief post on X, Falcon rocket lands for the 500th time. This particular booster was on its third flight, continuing the rhythm of fast turnarounds and reliable recoveries that have become standard for SpaceX. The launch also marked the 85th orbital mission from Florida's Space Coast this year, and SpaceX's 130th Falcon 9 launch of 2025, a pace that would have been unimaginable just a few years ago. A lot of people are saying that the real space race today isn't between the US and China. It's between China's national space program and SpaceX. And honestly, they might have a point. Even Elon admits that without SpaceX, China would have outlaunched the US for years. Since the end of the Cold War, the US has pretty much led the way in space exploration and orbital tech. More advanced satellites, bigger missions, the works. But there was a catch. Getting to space was really expensive. The space shuttle, for example, was meant to make launches cheaper through reusability, but in the end, it didn't live up to that promise. It was complex, costly, and didn't deliver the savings people had hoped for. Meanwhile, Russian rockets were getting the job done more affordably. In fact, well into the 2000s, they were the go-to option for getting mass into orbit. And when the U.S. retired the shuttle, NASA actually had to rely on Russian launches to get astronauts up to the International Space Station. Then came SpaceX. Elon Musk's company completely shifted the game. They figured out how to make rockets that could launch, land vertically, and be used again, something the shuttle never really managed in a cost-effective way. That kind of reusability is a huge deal. Instead of building a brand new rocket for every launch, you just refurbish and refuel the one you've already got. It's a total game changer. SpaceX's Falcon 9 made launches significantly cheaper, around $2,500 per kilogram to low Earth orbit for external customers, with payloads of up to 23 metric tons depending on the setup. Musk has even said the marginal cost per Falcon 9 launch is about $15 million, which comes out to under $1,000 per kilogram. That's widely seen as the best deal in the business right now. Despite billions in private capital flowing into the U.S. space industry, no American or European company has come close to matching what SpaceX is doing. It's not even clear if anyone's truly pressuring them. The only serious competitor might be China's state-run space program. Russia, once a dominant player, has mostly faded from the spotlight. Right now, SpaceX is leading in every major area of spaceflight. It launches satellites for other companies and governments, it launches and operates its own massive Starlink internet constellation, and it sends humans into orbit, including NASA astronauts, to and from the International Space Station. Musk's company completely dominates the commercial satellite launch market. Its fleet of reusable rockets gives it a huge advantage, not just in speed and volume, but in cost and profit margin. No one else is doing reuse at this scale, with this level of reliability. It's true that a number of those launches were dedicated to Starlink, so they're not bringing in direct revenue. But that's the point. They're building an entirely new business. And so far, it's working. Starlink is now the largest private satellite network in the world, giving SpaceX a foothold in global communications on top of its launch dominance. And when it comes to human spaceflight, SpaceX isn't just playing a role. It's the ride for NASA astronauts. Under NASA's Commercial Crew Program, SpaceX developed the Crew Dragon spacecraft, starting with contracts back in 2011 and 2012. Since then, it's become the go-to option for crewed missions to the ISS. And of course, we can't forget the new space race to the moon. The U.S. has a big, ambitious plan to get back there. And while SpaceX is just one part of that effort, it's a really important part. SpaceX's main role in NASA's Artemis program is to build the Starship Human Landing System. That's the lunar lander that'll take astronauts from orbit down to the moon's surface and back up again. It's set to be used for Artemis 3, the mission aiming to return humans to the moon, and later missions like Artemis 4, where it'll also shuttle crew between the Lunar Gateway space station and the surface. On top of that, SpaceX is also providing cargo support to help keep these missions running. In fact, some experts say NASA has become heavily reliant on SpaceX to deliver the future of America's space program. If this is truly a space race, we're setting out our national goal and saying, well, we hope this company pulls it off, said Casey Dreyer, chief of space policy at the Planetary Society, a nonprofit focused on promoting space exploration. 
The stated national priority of the United States is actually in the hands of a private company now, rather than the government. That wasn't the original plan when NASA started working with commercial partners. The idea was to encourage competition, lower costs, and create multiple options so no single failure would put the whole program at risk. But so far, no other company, not even big names like Boeing or Jeff Bezos's Blue Origin, has been able to match what SpaceX is bringing to the table. And the pressure is only growing. With NASA facing possible budget cuts and shifting political winds, the stakes for SpaceX and for the entire Artemis program are higher than ever. China's lunar exploration program is clearly setting its sights on something big, sending astronauts to the moon. It's a major milestone, one that, so far, only the United States has achieved. The goal is to match that accomplishment and the prestige that comes with it. And they're not dragging their feet, either. China is aiming to land a crew on the moon by 2030. After that, they plan to build a permanent base on the lunar surface. To make all this happen, state-owned companies in China's space sector are upgrading the technologies they've spent the past decade developing. We're talking better spacesuits, a new lunar lander, and, most importantly, a brand new super heavy lift rocket. By U.S. standards, super heavy lift means a rocket that can carry at least 50 metric tons to low Earth orbit. China's new Long March 10 rocket is expected to haul 70 tons to LEO and 27 tons toward the moon, a serious capability. Of course, when it comes to big, ambitious payloads, SpaceX is still leading the pack, both in the U.S. and globally. They're pushing rocket technology forward at an incredible pace, but that doesn't mean China won't catch up. With enough time and resources, there's no reason to think Chinese scientists and engineers can't replicate or even improve on what others have already done. In recent decades, China has proven remarkably effective at scaling up domestic industry, everything from electronics and chemicals to shipbuilding. They've become a global manufacturing powerhouse by combining market strategies with state-backed support, like subsidies and export incentives. Sure, many of the world's breakthrough technologies weren't invented in China, but today they're produced there in massive quantities. If China can develop fully reusable rockets, even if they're not quite as advanced as SpaceX's, it could open up a world of new possibilities. So, who's going to win the next big race in space? Honestly, it's hard to say, but that uncertainty is part of what makes it so exciting for those watching from the outside and especially for the people working to make it happen.